Hi, I'm Jason from Better Batteries and I'm here today to talk to you about charging lead crystal batteries. This is one of our um, most important topics. If, if you know nothing about lead crystal batteries and you watch our videos and you go away with one piece of information, that is the correct charging uh, requirements for, for our battery. It's the one thing that will determine whether you get a good result or a bad result. Uh, our battery is a, is a fantastic battery. Um, it's not indestructible, but it is very resilient and it, it can handle more than most batteries on the market today. But like anything in life, it does need to be treated properly and the right charge current is probably the most critical thing. In the world of batteries, we talk a lot about voltages and having the right voltage and what setting to put a charger on and whether that be an AGM or a gel or a lead crystal or a lithium. Each battery has its own unique characteristics about how it wants to be charged. And if we look, for example, at the difference between even just an AGM and a gel, uh, an, an AGMs will charge somewhere around about the 14.6 and, and gels around 14.4 to 14.3. So there's not much of a difference there, some 0.2 to 3 of a volt. But that voltage difference can have a very big impact on the way that the battery uh, charges. If I don't push the right amount of voltage into a battery, uh, it, will, it will experience undercharging and, and you won't get the full potential out of a battery. At the end of the day, we need to achieve three basic stage, stages of charge, bulk, absorption and float. And I often say to people that battery charging is a bit like filling a bottle of water in your kitchen sink. The bulk stage is where we push all the current available from the charger into the bottle. And that's like having the tap full on. Now this is a really critical part for our battery because our battery needs to be charged at a certain percentage and it is different between the different types. For our CNFJ range, our traditional deep cycle range, you have to charge that battery at 30% of its rated capacity. So if it's a 100 amp battery, you'll need a 30 amp charger. If you parallel two of those batteries together, you're going to increase that to 60 amps. If you join three together, 90 amps and so forth. And that can be a problem or a struggle when you're trying to retrofit these batteries into an older caravan or, or an older boat that have got a smaller charger. But it is pertinent and critical to the correct operation of the battery. Our battery has a small amount of moisture in it. It's, it's essentially a dry cell, but there's a very small amount of moisture in that battery that moves between the positive and negative plates between charge and discharge. We need that charge current to keep that moisture moving between those two plates. If you undercharge the battery uh, in time, and they will operate from a partial state of charge. In other words, I could go out in the caravan with solar on my, on my roof and operate from a small solar system for months on end. But when I get back, I do need to put it on the right size charger to keep that moisture and push that moisture back out of the plate so we keep that electrolyte active. If we don't, in time the battery will lose capacity and the worst case scenario is the battery goes into a, almost a bit of a lock-up stage. That moisture gets held in the plate and the battery will dramatically reduce in, in uh, capacity. We've got a fantastic engineering team at Better Batteries, one of the best in the world, and those guys have, have worked tirelessly. They've come up with a reset procedure. So if you do get into, your, into that situation, though, you have to have to buy a new battery we're able to reset that and we're educating our stockists also worldwide on how to do that. So that's a, it's a really important part that during that bulk stage that you charge at the right capacity, the EVFJ range needs to be charged at 20% of its C10 rate. Just keep in mind that the EVFJs are rated at C3 because they're a heavy discharge battery. So just have a look on the data sheet. You'll find the C10 rate 20% of that is the charging capacity for the EVFJ. So 30% for CNFJ, 20% for EVFJ. Same for the CNFT, CNFJ and CNFT are the same, uh, and the EVFJs stand on their own. Even the solar batteries, the larger two volt cells and standby and storage batteries need to be charged at higher charge current. So that's bulk. Once, so we allow full current in the battery, the battery will, will take its full charge. Our battery will take about 80% of its charge in the first hour or two. But if we, if we hold a battery or a piece of lead at that massive charge current, it'll just start generating heat over time and then we're, we're, we're losing efficiency. So we need to 
back the charge current off a little bit. So this is what we call absorption stage, where we halve the charge current. And on our battery, you'll find that's what we call 0.15C. So about half of, of the charge current. Uh, that allows the lead to just relax a bit and soak, and you'll find the voltage will continue to rise. We like an absorption voltage of around 14.7. So when in filling the bottle, that's like just backing the tap off a little bit as we approach that 80%, otherwise we, we, we spill out the top. So that's the absorption stage, and the absorption stage usually takes another couple of hours, so maybe an hour or two in bulk, a couple of hours in absorption, uh, and then we go into float. So once we reach 14.7, we'll then reduce the voltage and the current. So we drop the voltage down to 13.6, and we drop the amperage right down low, so down to you know one or two amps, and we, we just trickle that last bit in. That's just like we do with a bottle, we just trickle the water into the top to get it really full. If I miss one of those stages, I don't really fill my bottle, and I end up only drinking half of the bottle or three quarters of the bottle instead of getting the full capacity, and the battery's no different. Uh, if I rush through the stage of charge, if I don't leave it on long enough and give it a good soak, then I'll experience a battery that doesn't have the capacity. It is a thing of lead. We are a lead-based battery, um, so we, we, we have similar charging characteristics to your more traditional batteries, but our electrolyte plate design separator give us that very much point of difference. So, um, so bulk absorption float, watch your charge currents, and uh, just occasionally give them a good soak. Uh, what I recommend to people is that every X amount of charge cycles, and uh, that'll vary greatly on how often you use the battery, but um, if you're a frequent user of the battery, say daily cycling, probably at least once a month, you want to give that battery a good deep discharge, maybe down to 10 and a half or 11 volts, and then give it a good long soak. Uh, again, we can operate from a partial state of charge. I know in the, in the, um, in the deserts in the Middle East, we, we operate the diesel generators there uh, from say, I think it's, we bring the battery down to about 70 or 80% then up to 20, 70, 20, 70, 20. And then about once a week, we give the battery a, a good cycle to keep that moisture flowing. But the battery will operate from a partial state, no worries at all been a bit of conjecture around some people look at some of our videos there was a recent video with uh, Rick from the off-road adventure show where we put a 170 amp battery with a 25 amp DC to DC charger now that DC to DC charger is is well too small for that vehicle but there's a couple of things that the video doesn't really tell people one is that Rick is instructed that between trips he run the battery down and give them a good maintenance cycle between runs which he does and the other thing that Rick drives for days at a time. Rick doesn't just drive for four hours and stop, he'll drive for, for literally days. So we know that that battery's gonna get a very long charge cycle. So between some maintenance charging, we can do that. So you can mix up your charging, but it's important, and we can't stress it enough, that you do need, you know, occasionally to get that charge current and keep that moisture moving between the plates. Do that and you'll have a great result. Have a look at our website, www betterbatteries.com. Um, there'll be lots of information there and if you don't get the information you need, jump onto one of the uh, your, your nearest country's support office and give us a call. We're happy to talk you through it. Have a great day.